Well, uh, the main uh, aim of our of our book was to be able to uh, map the development of uh, European party systems. Uh, we wanted to understand why certain uh, party systems are uh, more stable than others, uh, how they became uh, over time more uh, predictable, uh, what are the causes uh, explaining uh, these uh, differences, and also we uh, wanted to, to understand the relationship uh, between party system uh, institutionalization and uh, democracy, both in terms of consolidation and uh, the quality of democracy. So basically, we went from you know trying to understand you know the causes to the consequences and uh, mapping the development of party system. Well, uh, before the book, I would say that uh, the the main gap was uh, a, a really a lack of comparison, for example, there were various gaps, you know, but one of them was a lack of comparison between the um, eastern uh, part of Europe and the western part of Europe. Most of the studies uh, tend to be to be regional. Uh, also, you know, uh, they didn't take into consideration uh, many countries. For example, the microstates were not taken into consideration, uh, post-Soviet states. There are certain countries that they are not popular and people do not study. Our book does, does, does that. Uh, also, uh, the, the, in terms of the, of the consequence uh, for, for the functioning of democracy, there was not really a proper study that would distinguish between you know, the consolidation of democracy and the uh, quality of, uh, of democracy. So in this sense, you know, there the, the were various gaps, especially also in terms of uh, the, uh, the concept per se of uh, party system is the institutionalization. Most of the uh, studies were focused on uh, competition. Our book is more focused on cooperation, how political parties, you know, cooperate, colligate, you know, interact. So there were, there were, I would say, you know, the main, you know, uh, contributions to our study that, you know, try to uh, fill in a lacuna in the literature. Yes, yes. I mean, I think that the, the, the conclusions of our research will lead to the recommendations, right? So uh, I think the, 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 one of the main, the main conclusions is that uh, we are not doomed eh? uh, if we keep uh, a country democratic uh, over time, the party system should be institutionalized. It does not depend when the country became democratic. So this, I think, that are good news because you know we can help uh, to institutionalize the, the the party system. I mean, when I say we, I mean voters and, and, and politicians, of course. Uh, and in this sense, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's a bit con uh, in contradiction or, or, or with previous studies. Uh, the second thing is, uh, for example, the importance of uh, party institutionalization that you know, we need to invest on the institutionalization of political parties, and this will lead to the institutionalization of the, of the, of the party system. Um, of course, you know, we have the issue of uh, polarization. Uh, polarization has a negative effect on the institutionalization of party systems, so if we avoid polarization, then you know, we help also uh, to institutionalize party system. And, and why all this is important? Because party systems the institutionalization of party systems has positive consequences for the consolidation of, of democracy. So uh, we find that, mm, with the exception of one case, all institutionalized party systems, in all, in all countries that had institutionalized party systems, democracy never collapsed. And therefore, you know, this is very important. So you see, you have this holistic approach that by investing on institutionalization of political parties, by avoiding polarization, by, for example, uh, uh, helping the country to uh, become, uh, to keep uh, democratic, you will have, you know, good consequences for the functioning of democracy because this will help to institutionalize democracy.